everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I have been a high school English teacher for almost 24 years. I just recently left the classroom and I am now working for my school district as a teacher on special assignment working for the English language program. And so I decided to make these short little videos to help teachers out, if whether you're new or been there for a while and just are struggling to figure out how to integrate our ELD standards into lesson plans that you already have. So what does that look like? So today I'm gonna to just briefly talk about the different levels of ELs. We're gonna take a quick glance at the ELD standards and then we're gonna jump right in. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a fifth grade science lesson where we're using a lot of scientific terms and how you can make that accessible to our English learners. So here, you know, I always like to start and remind ourselves, you know, who's sitting in our classroom? And so that really begins with looking at all that data that you have, uh, looking at your students' profiles and so forth. But just by taking a glance at your class, you might not quite know, right? And so we, we think about our students and we realize there's a lot of needs. And so whether they're students with language, um, you know, uh, language that they need a little bit more support with, right? Or maybe they have, you know, social anxiety. Uh, remember after this pandemic and uh, distance learning, a lot of our students regressed in their skills uh, of building literacy skills, uh, communicating effectively. And so uh, even our gifted students can't also benefit from some of the strategies and tools that we're going to talk I'm going to talk to you about today. So as you can see here we might have uh, one, two, a few students who are, are non-English speakers. So how do we make things accessible for them? And so as we look at our classroom we realize there's a lot of different needs there. Uh, so you know I always like to use this little uh, visual here. Uh, we sometimes feel that, oh, you know, I need to give everything the same way to my students. It, it wouldn't be fair. And we really need to change that thinking uh, because all fields uh, of, you know, whether it's business, medicine, uh, even uh, restaurants, right? They, we need to keep our students in mind. We need to keep our, our clients in mind. What is it that they need in order to be successful. So we wouldn't give the same medicine. We wouldn't give the same food sometimes, right? Uh, people have different uh, allergies or, or likes. Same thing in our classroom. Our students need slightly different things. I'm not, we're not looking at different lessons. It's the same lesson. However, we're going to spice it up, change it up a little bit so that they can be successful uh, in learning and gaining access to that material. All right, so what are the different levels? Let's begin just very briefly. We have our beginner or our newcomers. So, you know, many times we are getting students from all over the world and that's a great privilege to have, right? These kids come with a wealth of knowledge and experiences that they can share with their peers and, and really um, give us insight into what they've gone through, right? And give them that voice. And so these are students who maybe can say yes, no, right? To some simple um, questions. They might definitely understand more than they can produce. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we're still giving them high quality uh, education uh, and rigor. Uh, we don't want to dummy things down or give them things, you know, that's different from what the rest of the class is having. They have the, the intelligence there, that grade level intelligence, uh, depending on their background. But we definitely want to just give them the language help that they might need. So uh, that's why I always warn teachers not to just ask the question at the very end, uh, did everybody get that? Uh, did everybody understand? Because those are like yes, no, and most of the time our English learners are not going to uh, verbalize, you know, hey teacher, I didn't understand that lesson. I need more help. They, they might just nod because everybody else is, is nodding. So we want to be careful with that. All right, our next group is our emerging. They are still very much the beginners. As you can see here, you can read this on your own, but they're very simple, basic sentences. Hello, my name is. A lot of conversational type of English and they might be familiar with high frequency vocabulary but they're going to struggle with when it comes to the academic reading and academic writing and so this is where we want to put in those scaffolds. Uh, we also have expanding so this is our like our middle group right and there's a remember there's a huge spectrum. Uh, these might be students who've been who actually were born here in the country, but because again, they might not have access to the English language at home, uh, they might have interrupted education, they might have gone, you know, back and forth from the, their native country uh, here. And, and so they're, again, it's a wide spectrum. 
these students might do well with having a conversation. Uh, they might have some grammar issues, but you know, they can participate in a social setting. But once again, they might struggle, probably will struggle with the higher level vocabulary, uh, more complex sentence structures, uh, things of that matter. Now we have our bridging students. Our bridging students are right on the cusp of being maybe reclassified, joining right uh, some of the mainstream courses. They're no longer in the ELD classes. And this is really important to know that you know, many of these students are not sitting in a, a individual ELD course. They are sitting in our science class, our math class, our, our, uh, our you know, our English courses, even though they're still English learners. Uh, and again, they need some different support. And so some of the strategies I'm going to show you can help with that. All right. This is a brief glance at the ELD standards. Really, uh, we focus on part one and part two. Part one, you're going to see these three terms, collaborative, actively, interpretively, and productively. These are the three areas that we want to make sure we hit when we're giving these lessons. And then the part two is we're going to talk about language. How does language, how does it look like in your course? And how do we make sure our students understand, you know, when we have certain vocabulary, such as however, when there's a, a comma, right? What does, what does a dash mean? just so that they can follow along. All right, what else do we have? I'm just going to, you know, read off this quote that I thought was very important. ELs at all proficiency levels are capable of high level thinking and can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language as long as they are prov provided appropriate linguistic support. So again, we don't want to exclude them from uh, assignments or from conversations. We want to invite them in and give them a, a way to be part of that conversation. All right, so here is a traditional lesson plan that I might have used uh, if I was a, a fifth grade teacher, especially let's say, you know, and I actually, uh, I'll tell you, I got this lesson from one of those uh, teacher paid teachers. It was a free one. It was fifth grade. I thought, okay, well, let's take this lesson. Notice there's a lot of language here, right? Lots of skills here that are going to be needed. And I know that the text is a little small, but I just, I mean, we're just kind of looking at, at what uh, the teacher might do. So here we have, of course, our, uh, next generation sign standard. So I want to make sure, okay, I'm really going to highlight, you know, what is it that I want my students to do? I want them to be able to ask clarifying questions. That's going to be the driving part of this lesson. I want them also to text, to cite their, their text sources, right? So I'm going to show them that's a common core ELA uh, standard. Remember, we're all doing literacy standards in all of our courses. And here I have my ELD standards. Again, there are the three parts, right? Interpretive, productive, interpretive, right? Uh, collaborative. And so what does that mean? You can kind of, you know, pause the video and read these on your own. But I also created a little cheat sheet. And so when I think about, uh, again, the ELD standards, these are the questions I like to ask. I, I call it the SIP method, right? Taking a little sip of the ELD standards. And what I mean is, when I'm teaching a lesson, before I start teaching my lesson, I always think, how am I going to make sure all of my students can fully participate in this lesson? And so here you can see the questions that I ask before I start putting together this lesson. I ask, how are my students going to collaborate? Definitely, you know, I often tell teachers that I work with, uh, especially as, a, you know, I've served as a BITSA mentor. Um, you, we don't want to lecture to our students, right? A lecture, yes, maybe for a few minutes. Remember, our attention span is very short, but we want to break it up with a chance for them to, to collaborate with one another. And so here you see in the green all the different ways students can collaborate. I love using like Kagan strategies, uh, right? When you're numbering off students, you're intentional about your groups, you know where you're you know, English learners are at, you know, where your students with special needs are at, and you're making sure they're partnered with, with strong students who can help them out. And so you have here all different uh, ways that you can have them collaborate, whether it's physically or even online, even something like Jamboard or Padlet uh, allows them to do a quick little note, collaborate, so everyone's participating. The next question I ask here, again, in that SIP method, collaborate, interpretive, and productive, is how will my students interpret what they're reading? There's, you saw a lot of words on that, on that text. So take a look at some of these. 
Am I providing word banks for words that I am, maybe my students might not know? Can I have them read to each other, right? Can I have them jigsaw certain parts, right? Again, I want to avoid um, lecturing. I want to avoid uh, just giving them the handout and having them read silently. They need to work with the text, right? Uh, I want highlighters out. I want annotating tools. Uh, maybe I do something called the three reads protocol. Uh, maybe I do a close reading. Maybe I model for them how I'm going to read and, and the think alouds that I'm doing, uh, for by, uh, students who are very, uh, who need a little bit more language support. I might show them translation tools to help them. Uh, again, I, I want to make it so that they can participate in the thinking, right? Not necessarily in, in, you know, again, um, this is, I'm not teaching them English in a science class right now. I'm trying to get them to know the, the material. So it's okay to have them translate the work, right? They can translate it. Uh, finally, the last question I'm doing is uh, this one. Are my students, what are my students going to produce? Are my students producing grade appropriate work? Uh, vocabulary, are they going to use high level vocabulary? Are they going to use um, course specific vocabulary that I want them to use? Uh, more complex syntax to express themselves. So here are the different products that they can do. Yes, we can have them do journals and labs, but they can also do other things like a brochure, right? They can make a commercial. They can do a mini speech, participate in a Socratic seminar. So productive might be written form. Or it might be a verbal form. All right. So I call this again, the SIP method. All right. So here again, here's a, a more text. Notice that there's some visuals. So I want you to think about these questions. How can we differentiate for our students, right? Uh, do I have to give the entire article to my English learners? Can I chunk it a little bit? Um, can I have them, um, again, look for some key vocabulary and give them the vocabulary beforehand? Uh, what tech tools can we use to support our students? So there's all types of things out there now. Uh, like I said, I like to use something called Pear Deck, where you can actually put this on an online version and students can answer questions, highlight, annotate, and you could see it live while they're working and you can, you know, quickly see, oh, you know, little Johnny there uh, missed a little part here. I'm going to walk on over and help him out. So again, uh, different, different uh, tools out there. Uh, the second part of the ELD standards asks us to talk about the structure of a text. So it's always important to, to show them not to assume that students might know this, but we might want to ask them, you know, why is this in bold? Why do we have bullets here? Uh, why might the author put this graphic here? And so we're, we're unpacking the way that works are sometimes written. How is this different from a traditional essay, right? Uh, and so how this is structured is going to be important because it shows them, oh, this is informative. Oh, you know, these are going to be the main points that I might not look for. Oh, look, the author's using research. I could, I know this because it's in parentheses. And it's research from 2016, so I don't know, we're in 2022, so, right? Uh, how credible is that? So I'm showing them what a good, strong reader is looking for when they're reading some material. All right. Um, again, on this, uh, uh, this lesson, the teacher created some, you know, basic questions that you're going to have. They even have a QR code where the students can look at a short video. And then again, some more questions. Um, how can this be a little bit more engaging? Right. Remember, if we're trying to use a SIP method, can I have them collaborate on this? Can I have them, um, you know, interview partners on how they might do this? Can I have them, uh, you know, walk around and, and talk to someone else? We're trying to get them to produce language. Um, maybe I have them make a big poster and we do a gallery walk and see everybody's uh, answers and comment on those. Um, what are going to be some of the challenges if our students are just working in isolation, do this for homework, uh, for our English learners? Um, number one, right? Some of that vocabulary. Uh, they might not have, uh, uh, the ability to look back on their notes. Did you ask them to take notes so that they can answer these questions? So it's just things to think about. And here's the next one. Uh, let me go back actually. Uh, so here, if, my ultimate goal is for them to answer in complete sentences and to cite the source. As you can see, here's the answer key. What might I do to be able to get my students to that point? A lot of times we complain about, oh, look at this 
essay, they didn't write it well. Oh, look at the answer here. They didn't write a complete sentence. Well, if I wasn't explicit with it, if I didn't explicitly say that in my instructions, they might not be able to do that. And for our English learners, they might not know what expectations of writing we have. Um, so here's where a writing frame uh, with uh, modeling exemplars really do help our English learners. All right, what else do we have? So here's some more resources that you can use. If you go to uh, Canvas Commons, you will be able to find this. This is called uh, Tools for in uh, Scaffolding. And uh, basically, uh, this is from LACO. And what they did here is that they took the different levels of our English learners and took things like reading questions, um, discussion questions, and so forth, and looked also at Bloom's taxonomy, different levels of, of that teaching, right? So we'll see here if it loads, here it goes. And so, you know, we wanna think about, am I giving them only level one questions, especially to our English learners? Are they all like what, where, when, why? I, I wanna make sure that I don't just stay in that level one of questions that I do, you know, again, uh, and I have that rigor to the lessons. All right, I'll let that load here. And so, uh, again, this is a, a resource that you can use. Uh, oh, okay, here it goes. And so you can see here Bloom's taxonomy and the different levels, and I'm just gonna show you one quick little uh, example. So here we have, for example, our, our emerging Take a look at the type of questions. These are level one questions that you might ask. Notice how you can do questions. So there's different things here. You could do questions, you can do sentence frames, you could do strategies, or you could do products. This is what maybe some of our level one students might do. You go to the next one. Uh, here's again a little bit more. This is now for our expanding students. So same thing, the type of questions, type of sentence frames are starting to get a little bit longer, more complex type of expanding activities that you can do and type of products that they are able to produce. And finally, we have our bridging. This is again still on DOK1 kind of questions that are going to become a little bit more open-ended. Again, our sentences are going to be a little bit more complex. Notice again the bridging type of strategies that you can use and the type of products that the students can produce. So this uh, tool here uses uh, DOK2 all the way to DOK4 and it breaks it down by each level, emerging, expanding, and bridging. So really a, a great resource there uh, for anybody who might want that. All right, finally, so I'm gonna just keep going here. So again, that was an ELD uh, lesson, and I, you know, here on this PowerPoint, which I'll make available, the California Department Ed has a lot of great sample videos on teachers using integrated ELD standards, and I think, again, it, you'll notice a lot of that SIP type of model where they're collaborating, they're using some kind of reading skills and, and strategies, and then they're producing, again, lots of language. All right, and then I'm not gonna play the video now, but if you want more resources, uh, you can find more. I'm gonna be posting a lot of this on Canvas Commons to help you out so that we can make sure, again, all of our students are invited to that table of education and they all feel confident in expressing themselves and asking for help if they need to and being able to use the tools that are available, especially with the technology that we now have. So again, thank you very much. My name is Araceli Garcia and I am a TOSA for the English program. Thank you so much.